to explain to the House the intended processes that underline the implementation of the Social Health Insurance Act. Um, In answering? Yeah, so because other also senators want to ask the, the issue on the strike. Yes. We are open that you can still ask on HIF, NHIF. Oh. Okay. So there is no problem. Most, thank you. So, Honorable CS. Who are previously who are beneficiaries of the framework of the processes under the Act? I don't know if you can answer that one. Thank you, Speaker and Honourable Members. Yes, indeed, the Ministry has a process for implementing the Social Health Insurance Act. And for us, starters, the Ministry did gazette a transitional committee that has experts to ensure seamless transition from NHIF to social health. The committee has been sitting for the last three months. It has developed a roadmap on what needs to be done in terms of implementation. Additionally, the ministry worked on regulations for operationalizing the Social Health Insurance Act. And indeed, the, the, the regulations were already approved and gazetted. So we are in the process of uh, finalizing with the transitional committee to ensure that all matters are taken care of. And I want to assure the House that one thing that the transitional committee is ensuring is that the Kenyan should not actually notice that there has been a change from NHIF to social health authority. The services that are being provided will continue to the time that then Social Health Authority takes over from NHIF. And some of the things that they are doing is auditing of the existing assets and liabilities so that they are taken over by the Social Health Authority. So, Speaker and Honourable Members, I want to confirm that we have a process that is ongoing. We have a roadmap. The Transitional Committee is working. As a minister, I meet with them after every two weeks so that I get appraised of the process. And our intention and our plan is that from the 1st of July, then we shall have completely moved to Social Health Authority. Thank you, Honorable Speaker and Members. Thank you. Uh, as I guided uh, Honorable Senators, we stick to this particular uh, question, I'm not touching on the strike so that I will give the CS opportunity to, to put the Senate and the country. So if you have a different angle, then I can give Senator Muma Mueka. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity. Uh, welcome, Madam Sears Nahumicha, uh, to the Senate. Now, my question is related to the repeal of the NHIF Act. Uh, you have explained uh, the good intentions and the plans you have in place to have a smooth transition, transition uh, uh, to the new system. Uh, I wanted to ask whether you are aware that many Kenyans are still paying NHIF but not receiving services. We have many Kenyans whose NHIF cards are not being honored in many hospitals and they are actually stranded. Are you aware of that and what are you doing about that? Thank you, Honorable Speaker and uh, Senator Muma. Yes, I am aware that Kenyans are still paying NHIF, and that is the way it is intended to be, that payments continue to be made and ensure access to services. Speaker and Honorable Members, I would like to take responsibility that for sure there has been disruption of services, but not stoppage of services. And the disruption of services is because of the unpaid claims by NHIF to health facilities. And this has been occasioned by a delay of exchequer release to NHIF. But I want to confirm that NHIF and together with the ministry, 
we have been having engagements with most of the facilities which are around the faith-based facilities. We've had a meeting with them. The rural health providers, we have had a meeting with them. The private providers, we have had a meeting with them and given a commitment that they should continue to provide services because the claims will be honored. Speaker and honorable members, I would like to inform the House that it is really natural that most of the facilities, due to the transition, then they would be a little bit not sure whether their claims are going to be paid or not. And some are taking that drastic action of not providing services. But as a ministry, we are, going, we are continuing to engage them. And as I said earlier, one of the things that the Transitional Committee is doing is to verify the claims, to verify the assets and liabilities of NHIF. So, Speaker and Honourable Members, I want to assure facilities that there is no cause of alarm. They do not need to disrupt facilities. That once they have provided services, their claims have been verified and reconciled, they are going to be paid once resources are available. I submit, Speaker and Honourable Members. Thank you. Uh, Sen Senator Chute Mohamed. Thank you very much. Uh, Honorable Speaker, uh, mine is not uh, uh, something like a question, but I wanted to express my gratitude towards the CS, and I want to take this opportunity to thank the CS and the team, specifically the Director General, on uh, the support they've given us during and the time we had sponsors from Lord Mahavir Swami followers and giant group of uh, giant group Twiga on prosthetic limbs provided by Narayan Sewa Santa based in Udaipur, India. Honorable Speaker, we had camps in April and September 2023. We had another camp in January 2024, and the next one will be held in June 2024. Honorable Speaker, so far, to date, over 2,500 persons have benefited from the limbs that were provided by the organization. The camps are in Nairobi, in Meru, Honorable Speaker, your county, and also Mombasa, Kisumu, and Kisi. This year, the organization intends... Oh, Senator Chute, what is your question? Yeah. Uh, leading our statement oh, honorable to appreciate speaker, the uh, ministry. Yes, I'm trying so to... what is your question? I want, I want the people of Kenya to know that we appreciate what the CS is doing and this organization also. No, ask you a excuse question. Me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Can you protect me from these guys? The speaker is asking uh, a question. All the members, all the members. So... All the members. And, uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Speaker, this is You have an opportunity to, to, ask, to, to do that statement even later. It's kind of because of time, just ask the question and then... Honorable Oscar, as I finish, I want Kenyans to know that what the Cabinet Secretary and our team are doing, and this is very important for me and most of the Kenyans, and also, Honorable Speaker, I hope and believe that the CS is capable of solving the dispute between the doctors and her ministry. And thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker, as and son. I give you some good guidance and now you are still uh, diverting from my advice. So let us, it, there was no question at all. So, so let us have uh, Senator Nyonka, Richard. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. First of all, I would like to say that CS Nakumicha is uh, somebody I've known in my previous life and I'm happy to see her here. The question, Madam C.S., that I'm asking you is this. The NIJF Act has been repealed. You have several health facilities and health centers all over the country. Some of them who have not been paid for the last five years. Some of them have not been paid for the last three or whatever number of years. And what many of these Kenyans are asking is whether you have done an audit and this audit is meant to give you the list of the outfits or health facilities or companies that have been providing these health services to our people. 
And if so, is it possible for you, for the simple purpose of accountability and transparency, to give the list within the regions where these companies come from, so that by the time you are transitioning to the Social Health Authority, and you are transitioning with the health healthcare fund, my suggestion, Mr. Speaker, is that this would make it easy for these Kenyans, many of them who are complaining and saying how they've never been paid and they are being taken, their things are being taken by auctioneers, and many of them have actually be, been disenfranchised. I hope the CS will be able to look at it and give us an answer on that. Uh, okay, just let me get two more, then the CS can respond. What is your point of order, Senator Kifo Kiambu County, Karungo? Mr. Speaker, thank you for the opportunity. I am rising on a point of order 51C6C that you had indicated that you might give the CS permission uh, to, talk on a, to give a statement on whatever is going. Some of us, we do have questions to ask that. So my question is, or seeking your indulgence, you probably give the CS this particular moment to give a statement. Probably the questions that we want to ask are in that statement. I give a very clear guidance to Senator Karungo Dango that uh, I wanted to give a few senators to ask supplementary questions on this subject matter, on this question. And then I'll give the CS an opportunity still now to make a statement. I don't know whether you are the one who is in a hurry or the CS or myself, and I'm not. <laughs> okay, Senator Manda, Jackson. Um, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I would like to ask a supplementary question to the Cabinet Secretary in regard to reimbursements of NHIF, particularly to public facilities. And in this question, Honorable Speaker, as a community, we visited Bagadi Hospital. And the, the defunct NHIF owes them a lot of money and they are unable to deliver service. The other critical facility is the Nairobi Funeral Home that has a generator that has not been working for two years. Reimbursements from NHIF, Honorable Speaker, would have sorted, including Isolos Pro. So we would like to know in the transition period process, what is the department doing to make sure that the payments are being made? And what is the ministry serve as a mother ministry doing to pay the debts they owe to the defunct NHIF, including State Department of Public Service, for wiper amounting to millions of money to make sure that those debts are paid before the process, the new process begins? Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Yeah, Madam says, as you answer that, that is a question which was asked by another member. So it is, and Honorable Senators, this is a very uh, core question that is in the use of many senators. So maybe you, you give a comprehensive answer to that so that we don't repeat again. And, um, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members. On the question that was uh, asked by Senator Onyonka uh, about the repealing of NHIF Act. I think it is uh, now clear that we are in the transition phase. And yes, as a ministry, we acknowledge that there are claims dating back to five years, three years, and even others that are longer than the five years. What we have done as a ministry is one of the reasons that the act was, uh, the new act was put in place. One, we have claims that looked ridiculous. We have claims that on first value, would not be validated. And from the research that we did, we have claims that actually point to the first issue that I responded to of fraud in medical insurance. So what we have done, uh, Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, is that the Transitional Committee, one of the TORs, terms of reference that they have, is to do a proper reconciliation of the claims. They have a subcommittee where we have received experts from Treasury, we have received a, a representative from the Office of Auditor General to be able to verify those claims so that they can be paid. And I want to assure the, the House that once the Transitional Committee has confirmed that a claim is legitimate for payment, 
it shall be taken over by the social health authority. I also want to confirm that there is a special committee, national audit committee that was put in place by His Excellency the President and it is supposed to be looking into all pending bills. So there are some huge bills that then will be moved to the special audit committee chaired by the former uh, Auditor General, Mr. Ouko, to look into the long outstanding pending bills. Some of those will be verified there. But I want to assure the House that these claims, so long as verify, reconcile, they will be taken over by Shah. Having said that, I also want to confirm that payment of claims is a continuous exercise. So NHIF has been continuing to pay those claims that have been reconciled and verified. In the last year, a total of 36 billion was paid out to claims. The second question about reimbursement of claims to public facilities that has been asked by Senator Mandago of Wasingishu, who is also the chair of the health committee in the Senate, is that indeed it is true that there are many outstanding claims that are yet to be paid to public facilities. And these outstanding claims are not unique just to the public facilities. We even have faith-based facilities that have outstanding claims. We have private facilities that have outstanding claims. And as a ministry, this is a matter that we have brought to the cabinet's attention because we see it standing in our way as a risk in the transition. And following the bringing of this matter to the cabinet, a discussion was held last week between my ministry, the Ministry of Treasury, chaired by His Excellency the President, and Treasury was asked to look for resources for us to start paying claims. And I want to confirm that yesterday, my principal secretary in charge of medical services did receive information from Treasury that they are actually looking for 5.5 billion to be released to the ministry to start paying the outstanding claims. Thank you, Chair and Honorable Members. We are going to the statement at quarter yeah. to noon. Uh, thank you. Two thank more senators, then we go to the statement from the CS on the previous yeah. yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I take this opportunity to welcome the, the CS uh, for health, for coming to, our, to the Senate. Mr. Speaker, I hope in her statement she's going to tell us something about the strike of the doctors. But Mr. Speaker, uh, my question is uh, on the, the card, the defunct or the outgoing NHIF cards. Mr. Speaker, these cards, uh, when issued to beneficiaries, they are asked to specify the clinics and the hospitals where they wish to be treated. And Mr. Speaker, you specify two. And when you specify two, and supposing you are for, uh, 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 a civil servant, say a police officer, you are posted to Nairobi, your family is in the rural areas there, you have specified the hospital where they go. When you are in Nairobi here, you are only allowed to specify two. So you specify those, those two, a dispensary and a hospital where your family goes. Mr. Speaker, it is very, very inconvenient. I hope that the new system is going to address that so that the cards allow you to access facilities uh, of certain class or standard and you can go anywhere in the country and access yeah. those facilities. That's you don't okay. have to specify only two. That's okay. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I hope that yeah, is going to be addressed. Yeah, it's very clear to the CS. You can, uh, she will respond after, after I give Senator Omar Sheikh Mali, Maliam. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity. Mr. Speaker, my question goes to uh, CS. Is about uh, Edio Athia Medical. Uh, Mr. Speaker, that is under Minister of uh, Education, which contracted NHIF to offer medical to students. Mr. Speaker, I wanted to ask the CS 
what is your intervention on this uh, uh, termination of the contract? Because most of the kids, there are many kids who are stuck in abroad for medical treatment. So as a Minister of Health, what is your intervention on that? Uh, Senator Zufuna, your own intervention. You have a point of order, or maybe you are queuing to contribute to another matter? I had, I had a supplementary question, Speaker. On, the, on HIF? On NHIF, yes. Can they do within, uh, you know, you, you shoot straight within one minute, maybe then she can answer. I will do so. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I, I want to discourage the Cabinet Secretary for, from conflating and including other things in her answer to specific questions. The question by Senator Mandago was specific to money that is owed to public institutions. So in her answer, when she goes around and includes religious institutions and so on and so forth, I think she's conflating issues. We want her to tell us. In Nairobi, the public... The same question you're asking now. That, that's the, 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 the question, Speaker. Okay, the public ask. institutions in Nairobi, our level four hospitals in Nairobi, the four of them, Mr. Speaker, are all accumulative. 700 million shillings between Linda Mama and NHIF. What she needs to tell us, because these are not covered by the questions of fraud that we, she spoke about in the private institutions. She needs to tell us when she be paying the public institutions, including the four level fours in Nairobi. When will she be paying? Don't tell us about the religious institutions. CSA, oh, sorry, Senator Sifuna. And the CSA, they have now 5 billion on the way to pay these bills. Yeah, but that's a Maybe story... Because I don't want us to continue... That's a story, Honorable uh, uh, Speaker, that included other institutions that have to go through the vetting process, verification process that she spoke Sen about. Senator Zool, let's assure the Nairobi will be covered. Uh, uh, Speaker, why, why don't you allow the answer to come from the witness, Mr. Chair? Because you are not the Minister for Health. Please, Senator Zifuna. Senator Zifuna, you know we cannot have two speakers at the same time. You know that. Why is she? Why is she have a standing? Is it, no, you cannot direct direct your questions to the to the CS. You know, you nobody know, especially in this in this house. You should just abide by the laws of the of the debate. Understanding on that, Senator Sifun, with a lot of respect.